Hello and welcome to the demonstration for the CISSP practice questions. Uh, the purpose of this session is only to test your readiness for the CISSP exam and your familiarity with the CISSP CBK or common body of knowledge. Uh, and, and before we can actually go and start practicing these questions, a quick disclaimer that these are not the dumbs or anything that's similar. So these are merely the practice questions. Uh, which is, in my opinion, the best way to to learn uh, about the CISSP because you're going to learn the tips and tricks of how to attempt your questions. You're going to learn the technique, which is the most effective in my uh, case. And a lot of my students, they have been following that same technique, which is the elimination technique, where you will look at the given choices and start eliminating those that are not the potential candidate for the right answer. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I, uh, I would suggest that you pause the video wherever you, uh, you want and need, read the question carefully, select your choices and see the answer, read through the explanation and then continue to learn that way. So before, I think that is it. Yep, we can begin right away. So the first question, it's the, the first question out of the 10 questions in this demo practice session is, the US EU safe harbor process has been created to address which of the following? So the question is asking about the relationship between the two regions, the US and EU. And we all know that EU has been um, very, very touchy in the most recent uh, past due to these cybersecurity incidents that happened with Facebook and uh, Cambridge Analytica and, and anything that has to do with the personally identifiable information. So what are the options here? Number one, A, integrity of data transferred between US and European companies. So I'm going to use my elimination technique to demo this question uh, that how we can actually select the best answer among the given choices. So it, the, the option A, it is talking about only the integrity of the data transfer. Now we know that there are three basic principles of information security. That is C, I, and A. That is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So the option A is talking only about that one. I'm not eliminating it as of now, but I'm going to continue to read to the option B, which is confidentiality of data transferred between US and EU companies. So both of them individually, they're talking about just integrity and then confidentiality. Probably not the right answer. Option C, protection of personal data transferred between US and EU companies. So it's talking about personal data. So US and EU, they're talking about this PII stuff. Uh, I think this is probably the best candidate out here because option D, again, if you look at it, it's just talking about confidentiality. It's not talking about the C and then I and then I, A combined. So let's take a look. So here's the answer. Answer is C, the explanation is given here. And let me just see if I can actually adjust the display here. I hope it's okay and you could see the display. Yep, I can see that. All right. So uh, what you would want to do is that you can pause the video here and you can read through these options. Uh, what, are the, what, what is the correct choice here? Why it is correct and why these are not the right answers so that you can learn uh, while you're attempting these questions. Question number two, the owner of a system should have the confidence that the system will behave according to its specifications. This is termed as, now read the question carefully. You have to identify the keyword here. So the owner of a system should have the confidence, the trust that the system is going to behave according to its specifications. Is it called integrity? No. Accountability? No. Assurance, yes. Availability, again, a no. So the candidate answer would be like this one. And the right answer is C. Moving on to the question three. In regards to information classification, what is the main responsibility of information data owner? So you may get some options which are going to depict more than one responsibility 
of uh, responsibilities of the information owner. But you have to select which is the main, the primary, the star responsibility of the information or data owner. So quickly going through the option number one, determining the data sensitivity or classification level. Yes, that is right. They have to do this thing. I'm selecting it as a candidate answer. Running regular backups, no. Audit the data users, no. Option D, periodically check the validity and accuracy of the data, no. So the best explanation I can give to you is that the information owners, they're usually the, the heads of departments. So they're not going to get involved into the regular operational tasks like running a backup or, or doing an audit or periodically checking the accuracy of the data. So they're not going to be doing any of these activities. So the only option that is left out is A, which is the right answer. Yes, the explanation is given. You can read this. Moving on. Who can best decide what are the adequate technical security controls in a computer-based application system in regards to the protection of the data being used, the criticality of the data, and its sensitivity level? So the options are system auditor, B, data or information owner, system manager, data or information user. Which one of these is the right answer? What do you think? Which one should I select? A, B, C, or D? I'm going to go with B because it's talking about determining the sensitivity level, the criticality of the information. So this is best decided by the information owners. The right answer is B. Moving on. The typical computer fraudsters are usually persons with which of the following characteristics. A, they have had previous contact with law enforcement. Not necessarily. I mean, somebody can commit a crime for the first time, so they may not have a history. Uh, B, they conspire with others. Again, not necessary because somebody can do that all alone. They could be kind of like a lone wolf. C, they hold a position of trust position of trust would have all the authority, the permissions to to do thing that is right. But at the same time, they also have the capability to do the bad things. So this is a right candidate answer. They deviate from the accepted norms of society? No. They would want to be as normal as anybody can be. So I think the best answer is C. Let's see. That is C. Which of the following embodies all the detailed actions that personnel are required to follow? All the detailed instructions or actions that the personnel are required to follow. Standards, guidelines, procedures, or baselines. A procedure is something, a detailed step-by-step -step instructions that one would follow in order to perform an activity. So I am going with the option C here. That is C. Next question. The U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare developed a list of fair information practices. So we have to look for something that is normal, average, fair uh, practice that is focused on the privacy of the individuals. The, that is also known as personally identifiable information or in short form PII. So which one of the following is incorrect? Now, this is a trick thing here you can look at it which one which one of the following is incorrect so they are asking for something that is not right option a there must be a way for a person to find out what information about them exists and how it is used i think that is the basic right for everybody uh, there must be a personal data record keeping system whose very existence shall be kept secret that is not right there must be a way for a person to prevent information about them which was obtained for one purpose for from being used or made available for another purpose without their consent. That is, again, reasonable demand. So this is not the incorrect thing. This is the right thing. That is the correct thing to do. Option D, any organization creating, maintaining, using, or disseminating records of personal and identifiable information must ensure reliability of the data for their intended use and must make precautions to prevent misuse of that data. For example, Facebook, they should do these things, right? So that is what is expected of them. 
So the incorrect out of this whole thing is option B. Moving on to the next one, which of the following is not a responsibility? So again, it is a negative sentence here, is not a responsibility of an information or data owner. Option A, determine what level of classification the information requires. That is what they have to do. Periodically review the classification assignments against business needs. They must do this task as well. C. Delegate the responsibility of data protection to data custodians. This is exactly what they have to do. Option D. Running regular backups. Now this is again an operational activity which is not good or that doesn't fit right with the information owner. So I am going to select option D. That is right. Moving on. Who is ultimately responsible? So ultimately responsible for the security of computer-based information systems within an organization. We can have like intermediate responsibilities like on, on, on a daily basis we delegate some things, but the ultimate responsibility, if anything bad has to happen to the system, has to lie with somebody with the authority within the, within the organization. So a tech support team, no. B, the operations team, probably see the management team so this one is the highest authority the management team they have the most power the decision makers so they have the ultimate responsibility so i'm going to go with the option c because option t d is like training team they're not relevant here that is correct so the last question in discretionary access environments, which of the following entities is authorized to grant information access to other people who are going to make decisions about who is going to have what kind of authority, the permission on the information assets? A manager, a group leader, a security manager, or rightly the data owner. So this is the option. They have the authority and, and, and the duty actually to identify and, and do this activity. That is right. So that is the end of the practice session, guys. Uh, do these practice questions. Do a lot of practice questions. You study the CBK. You come back. You attempt these questions again and again and try to understand the concepts. Try to grasp the overall things that are being taught in the CISSP course. And I'm going to see you in the CISSP course again. So till then, uh, happy practice. Bye.